Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. Well, well. Uh, it could be on a light you note, know, but seriously also, because I know in the last uh, 48 hours or so, there's been a back and forth between the government and uh, the governor of Benue State and the villa. So when the president said, if I had offended you, forgive me, does this include the governor of Benue State? The president of Nigeria does not have ill will towards anyone. Uh, this is clearly demonstrated over the years by his actions. As we speak today, there is no politician in detention for things that they have said against President Muhammad Buhari. There is no journalist in detention for things that they have written or said against President Muhammad Buhari. So Muhammad Buhari does not personally hold grudges against individuals. He's a very forgiving person. And this is why he maintains a steady, stable health. He goes to bed with nothing against anyone on his mind, and he sleeps very soundly. Uh, why does he think that he has offended uh, people? Perhaps his critics would have said, OK, you came to office on a tripod of promise to fix the economy and insecurity in Nigeria, and of course, fight corruption. If it's based on those policies, maybe that's one reason they may hold a grievance on him and or with him, and perhaps thinking as a president delivered on the promises that he made to Nigerians, now that he knows he has just about 40 days to leave office, does the president feel that in some way there may have been some shortcomings in the delivery of his promises to Nigerians? Uh, two things, uh, Sheung, I would like to say. One is that, um, yes, the president uh, asked for, for pardon from those he may have offended. But uh, it's clear that there was no personal or specific admission of wrongdoing on his part. And two, I think we should not take the the speech out of the context in which it was made. This essentially was a religious get together. Occasions like this, and I, I believe it is in all the scriptures, prayers are always said for the victim and the abuser. It happens. And uh, uh, for those coming from the background of Islamic religious faith, Responsibility means more than what it ordinarily does to a number of people. As president and commander in chief, the president has a responsibility, that, that's a, the Islamic law, for everything that happens in the country, daytime, nighttime, whatever season. In the same way as you, as the head of a family, you're responsible. Well, it seems to be some. Uh... May not buy, and the president may not by himself gone out to offend somebody, but all of the authorities that 
that report to him whether there are tax authorities or financial crimes authorities. In the conduct of their duty, they may cross some lines. As far as that context is concerned, President Muhammad Wari is equally liable and for singly responsible for being head of state. So if you now look at it, uh, Mr. Shewu, uh, although the president and governors have the, uh, the prerogative to give pardon and clemency, but I don't know, but he cannot wait until he gets out of office. Um, we'll be probably not be surprised by his statement today uh, when he says, as soon as he retired or leaves office on the 29th of May, he will not spend one single night in the villa. And in fact, he said he will move very far away from the uh, presidential villa, the seat of power, for a needed retirement. The president today, after observing the Ida Fitri prayers uh, at the praying ground here in Abuja, the president also proceeded with top government officials to the banquet hall where he hosted several government functionaries. It was at that moment where the president made it known uh, what perhaps is on his mind. The president has said, look, I may have offended a few people, but please forgive me. Let me allow you to listen to the president. <laughs> Having been a governor and minister, then the president twice, uh, I think God has given me an incredible opportunity to serve with the country. And uh, thank God for that. So please, whoever thought that there has been some form of injustice on him, we are all human. There is no doubt I had some people, and I wish they would pardon me. And those that think that uh, I've had them so much, please pardon me. Government and uh, the governor of Benue State and the villa so when the president said, if I had offended you, forgive me, does this include the governor of Benue State? The president of Nigeria does not have ill will towards anyone. Uh, this is clearly demonstrated over the years by his actions. As we speak today, there is no politician in detention for things that they have said against President Muhammad Buhari. There is no journalist in detention for things that they have written or said against President Muhammad Buhari. So Muhammad Buhari does not personally hold grudges against individuals. He's a very forgiving person, and this is why he maintains a steady, stable health. He goes to bed with nothing against anyone on his mind, and he sleeps very soundly. Uh, why does he think that he has offended uh, people? Perhaps his critics would have said, okay, you came to office on a tripod of promise to fix the economy and insecurity in Nigeria and, of course, fight corruption. If it's based on those policies, maybe that's one reason they may hold a grievance on him and or with him and perhaps thinking, as a president delivered, on the promises that he made to Nigerians, now that he knows he has just about 40 days to leave office, does the president feel that in some way there may have been some shortcomings in the delivery of his promises to Nigerians? Uh, two things, uh, Shewung, I would like to say. One is that, um, yes, the president uh, asked for, for pardon from those he may have offended. But uh, it's clear that there was no personal or specific admission of wrongdoing on his part. And two, I think we should not take the, the speech out of the context in which it was made. This essentially was a religious get-together. Occasions like this, and I, I believe it is in all the scriptures. Uh, he's a human being, like he said. He's, he's a human being like you and I. 
And in the course of his action or inaction, he definitely will have stepped on toes. And uh, he has chosen 38 days to the exit of his administration to plead for forgiveness. Uh, but um, he's not the only one. Uh, a few days ago, Governor Ganduje Ganduje of uh, Kano State was the first to come out to say uh, people of Kano should forgive him. He has he possibly has stepped on some toes. And it's normal and natural for politicians to do that. Even PDP, after 16 years of misgovernance, uh, came out uh, after the Ekwerebandu report. Uh, yes. I think uh, it Uche was Prince, Prince, Prince Uche knelt down uh, yeah. Yeah, in Abuja. God yeah. bless you. So yeah. you can see that that's the whole political party. So say, look, Nigerians, forgive us. We have, we have heard. We committed a lot of atrocities. We did things the way it should not be done. So uh, it's, it's in the way of politicians to seek forgiveness. And it is also in the ways of every human being who believes in a supreme God to seek forgiveness. After all, the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in <laughs> So um, it's not out of place. But um, my own point of departure is, yes, there are actions and inactions. There are those actions that are force major. You know, you, you cannot help. So things just have to happen the way they are. And there are those, you know, somebody will say error of the mind, error of the art. Um, let me put this in context. Mr. President, in putting Nigeria through the excruciating pains of Nara redesign. And people were complaining. Is that forgivable? It's not for Nigerians. Because there are, be because there are people, businesses there are no, they, no more. God bless you. Because of that, uh, because because of, of that policy. And people were, people begging. were warning. People they? warned. People begged. People said, look, Mr. President, this isn't working. This is the eve of election. There are those who lost election in APC because of the president's action. I said there on this platform, part of the reason Ashwa Dubala Ahmed Tinubu lost the election in Lagos was because of this excruciating pain. Recall that he himself came out that the deliberate, of course, he, he may say he was quoted out of context, but he said they hoarded money, they hoarded fuel, but he will, he will contest and win. I mean, paraphrasing. Mr. Ojo, there were people who stripped themselves naked out of frustration in, banks, in the banking hall. Banking people had money, but they couldn't get access to it. Understandable reasons that the CBN gave that to cop this, to do this and do that. But the question is that how would you make policies that will make life more miserable and, for and, the populace, and, for the larger and, population? And on top of it, February 8th, the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, said, look, I'm giving this order, pending the determination of the merit of the case, let status quo ante be maintained. The president, after that Supreme Court decision, addressed the nation and did a selective, you know, uh, application. Said, okay, 200 naira will be circulated, the whole 200 naira will be recirculated in, uh, for another 60 days. But for 500 uh, 500 uh, 1000 uh. so I, I think the president at that point should have observed the rule of law observed the uh, agree with the supreme court uh, the justices and allow the and you could see that even when the final determination came i think um uh, was it march 25 or thereabout uh the cbn governor was still waiting on the president I think it's uh, my elder brother, uh, Gaba Shehu, that threw a mere failure under the boss by saying he shouldn't be waiting on the president to implement the Supreme Court decision. But that is the story. People lost I, business. That is one policy. People, that, that, what, about, you, you, what about oil theft? What do you have to say about oil theft? A military general, a major general retired in this country under, under him, Nigeria lost almost half of his daily oil production to crude oil theft. Can that be pardonable? Is that pardonable? 
I'm not judging. No, no, you are the political I, analyst. Well, I'm not judging the president. I'm only throwing the issue out there. No, but that, the, que the question is that, uh, and the reason why I'm asking you, if someone slaps you and is asking for forgiveness, it's up to you to know whether or not you are forgiven. But, but, but in this respect, I, I can say, well, <laughs> whatever it is, I forgive you, Mr. President. But those who are impacted most negatively, those who lost their means of livelihood, who lost their lives, who lost their businesses because of certain action and decision of the president, something that fall within his purview, would they want to easily forgive? The point is whether they even forgive or they don't forgive, there is little or nothing they can do about it. Uh, to her, human. You remember that when uh, Father uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Kuka came out with uh, that homily um, uh, early in the year, uh, the presidency disagreed vehemently with him. But the public, what he said resonated more with the public. Because, yes, one thing I must say is that Mr. President is not a sole administrator. Governance is of three arms and three tiers. We have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, and we have the, as a, the federal, state, and local government. But like Malangaba Shehu said in his earlier comment, that the president is asking for forgiveness even on behalf of some of his appointees. Who has and those ministries, who, departments, there are and those agencies. who will blame the president that he he, do, he gives people responsibility without acting without is, proper oversight. Is that pardonable? Without what? I'm uh, asking rhetorical no, questions no, no, uh, is, because we are dropping no, issues and policy decisions exactly. and style of leadership of the president. That look. It is a precedent. Anybody could come into office and say, after eight years, I will ask for forgiveness and I will move on. It's not that easy. Because policy and decision of leaders have consequences on their lives. Look at how many Nigerians that have left this country because of attitude that they experience, because of the threats to their business, because of insecurity. So it, are those past pardonable? For, for me, no action is not pardonable. Uh, everything is pardonable. And even if he didn't ask for forgiveness, Many Nigerians are saying, we can't wait to let this man go. He said he's tired. He said he wants to go and rest. Let him go and rest. I read this, um, the public speech. One, Mr. President has been one of the luckiest, and he admitted earlier today that he's been one of the luckiest Nigeria. He has been everything anybody could aspire to be in Minister, life. Minister, governor? Minister, uh, no, President military twice. administrator. Yeah. Way back in 1976. Mm -hmm. Military administrator, Minister of Petroleum Resources, and is under the same minister with the, all the experiences that we have the highest level of oil theft. And the, in and, the, and the president who was also, who is also the substantive of... minister. Gentlemen, good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. 
So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.